Um, so welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Marco, and um, I'm going to present this uh, this new library uh, that we started recently. Um, I'm uh, I'm a PhD student in robotics uh, at the University of Extremadura in Spain, uh, but I work here at the at A Star. Uh, uh, I have a I have a research uh, scholarship to finish my PhD there, and I'm I'm doing some little bit of uh, language uh, research. Uh, but my main topic is uh, computer vision. I, I do the computer vision for for, for robotics at the at the robotics lab. Um, I wanted to ask first: uh, Does any of you have uh, worked with computer vision related stuff? Can I get hands up? Uh, yeah. Anyone such as like OBCB, stuff like that, point cloud library, something? Okay, cool. Um, so, because th there's, there's a lot of uh, stuff going on here, I got a lot of background uh, that I'll talk. Uh, so, I'll, I'll tell you about the story about how it got started. It's pretty new, as I said, it's very, very, uh, very in an early stage. Uh, but I wanted to, to talk about it to get an idea of what you guys might think about it or, or how, uh, how does it fit uh, the people's needs. Uh, so I come, I come from this, this robotics lab, as I said, in Spain. Uh, one very cool thing, and not that cool at the same time, is that we do the whole thing on the robots. Like, we do everything. We will, like, for, for example, for this face, we will be cutting the metal to make the face. That's, that's very cool when you talk about it, but when you have to do it, and, and you're the computer vision guy, you're like, why the hell am I cutting metal, right? So it's, it's a pain in the ass because we have to deal with all the problems in robotics, and it's, it's, uh, it's actually a big, like, big problem. So in the end, for me that I'm doing a PhD, I end up having not that many publications, and, and, and I don't fit that well in the system. But anyway, it's cool. You get to you get to touch a bit, a little bit of everything. Uh, luckily, I'm not that into the hardware part because I, I we got some some people that that deal with that. But still, uh, you get to learn a lot. Uh, so my my role on the lab was was doing the, the computer vision part, as I said. Uh, so we have our own framework, as as we do. Uh, as I said, uh, we do everything, right? So we don't use any other framework like they, like they, most of the people do. They use Frost or, or, or any other ones. If we build our own one from scratch. So we have to deal with our own, our own tools uh, for the robots, right? And my main task there is to provide the team with the, with the tools for, for uh, to deal with the, with the mission part of the robots. Um, so, uh, at some point, um, this is how this is what uh, Robocom, the framework work, looks like. Like what, what we have there. Uh, for those that don't know how, how to program robots, it's it's mainly like component component oriented programming. So it basically is, is like component that talk to each other through interfaces, and each component will will do a certain task <coughs> talk to the other. So let, let's say I would have a component to grab images from the, from the camera, and then I have another component that will be processing those images and maybe detecting tables, something like that, through, the, through, through like an algorithm like Ransack or something like that. Uh, so that's how it works. We have components, we have the interfaces to talk to the, to the components, uh, and then we have some files, some other stuff, documentation, CMakes, and here we have the classes and libraries. So we build our own classes and libraries for for uh, to make it easier to develop components, right? And there was like a lot of libraries by the time, and I went, and there was one one missing, like a computer vision library for for a framework, right? Like specific for a framework. So there was this summer uh, that uh, was my computer, and uh, got an idea, and I was like, hey, why don't we make a uh, uh, a computer visual library specific for robotics. I mean, there, there's, there's, there's others out there, but uh, I found it that every time I, 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 was, I was coding uh, the same stuff to, to like deal with tables, deal with subjects, 
and it would take me a, a fairly amount of time and I was mainly using the same uh, thresholds and, and hard-coded numbers so I was like I will maybe want like a bit of a layer up so I don't have to deal with this I've just I've, in the end I'm, I'm mostly like trying to try it up with uh, detecting cups uh, or, or bottles or something same stuff, it's just like, to, to, so I can make my, my, my robot move, right? So, the, with this idea, um, a little bit of help, well, actually, a really good help from uh, the program from Google Summer of Code, and this student, Kripa, it's a uh, really good student that uh, I got uh, for this project. Uh, we, we managed to, to, to start, uh, a library for, for the framework, right? Um, so yeah, the thing is that what why am I doing this? Like why 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 am I doing this uh, robotics uh, library? Where where does it fit? There's there's a there's a computer vision library already. There's uh, OpenCV. There's PCL. Those are the main ones. That, that they're really good actually. Uh, but I want it to be specific for the task we do in in, in the robots. Uh, so we, we want it to be like very easy to use, like just like a few lines, and then I can start detecting stuff. Like just detect something and then go ahead. Uh, we found out it, it was good for beginners that because it was very easy to, to try out stuff, just a few lines, and then you, you can you can just go ahead and try out stuff. And it's good for, for computer vision researchers because uh, it allows you to to like uh, use the same. Uh, uh, different approaches to to, to to one goal and 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 try them out very very fast. Um, so here's a bit of where where is it stands. It, it's it's a um, it's a library that goes on top of uh, uh, as we as we say on, on research. It's, it's on solder of giants, right? Uh, we have OpenCV and point cloud library underneath, uh, which are the main the main uh, libraries that uh, we use. Uh, but the thing is that you don't have to care about like having two libraries dealing with the two uh, uh, different stuff. Uh, so you can just do it through through one uh, common thing and then just have some some presets and just go ahead and, and detect stuff very fast. So that was the whole point of it. Um, so it just. Uh, if anyone wants to just jump on and try to get started on it, it's, it's fairly easy, like anyone. Uh, the, it's a pain in the ass to install dependencies, I won't, I won't lie, because uh, it's very, we, it's research, so we try to use the latest versions of everything. So you probably have to install OpenCV, uh, latest version, uh, PCL 1.8, or, or Trans version. Uh, we need, we need uh, you don't actually need CUDA extensions, but they're highly recommended. Uh, you might need uh, the country uh, package from uh, OpenCV. And um, yeah, so that uh, that's mainly the, the getting all that compiled takes especially a lot of time. Uh, and then you can start uh, running the, the just clone it and, and, and make it and, and install. It's, it's fairly straightforward as any other. Uh, library. Um, I will talk a bit about the, the basic structures of the library, so you can get an idea. And um, well, the, I, actually, this talk was going to be like just thirty minutes, but uh, the, the 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 speaker before dropped out, so I got like another extra thirty minutes. And I, I'll so I'll try to do some code uh, and show you how how this works later. I hope it's not too boring. And uh, it's kind of cool. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll explain first uh, a bit of the basic structures uh, that we have. Um, so we divided mainly we divided the the action of the of detection with two main parts. We have a training and, and a detection part. So we have uh, trainers. So you can you can. Uh, you can train your, your your model with a with a with data, and then you use that on the detection part. So you have different trainers and different detections 
for either for 2D or 3D data on, or stuff like that. So here you can see the detectors. So first of all, you, you train something, and the trainer will uh, will implement the train uh, method, and then uh, they all inherit from 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 the trainer. It's a virtual class, and uh, yeah, you can instantiate the, the trainers and give them the feed them the the data you wanna you wanna use for the training, and go ahead and train it. Then you will use a detector. There's a bunch of detectors, not many yet, because this is like really uh, really new stuff. Uh, but then. Uh, once you you uh, train with a proper trainer, you can you can go ahead and, and, and use the detector uh, over a scene. That's a, a data structure that uh, represents a, a scene of the that you want that you want to over the, the ones you want you want to detect. Uh, there's two kind of detections. There's one that that you you have better regular one that runs over an object and the one that it, it will run over us a, a whole scene. So it's like kind of like pre-segmented or after or, or not segmented, right? Um, yeah, so those are the textures. Um, and then what you get out of a, uh, a detector will give you a detection, right? So that's, that's what you get out of the act of detecting something you get what is called a detection. And then this is a structure, again, that will contain image, that will contain the pose, label, uh, will contain everything that is, it, even the confidence. You can get the confidence for, for, for not for all the other detection algorithms, but some of them, you get a level of confidence of uh, the detection that just happens, right? Um, so here's a... a a few of the detectors that we have are already implemented. Uh, we have 2D detectors, Hog, Cascade, uh, Face Recognizer, uh, 2D for local uh, um, features, local features like Sift, uh, Surf, uh, those kind of features. Uh, and then we have 3D detectors for uh, for for global uh, global features. Uh, we we will show. I'll show you the demos later on this. Also, another uh, basic structure that we have is the frame generator. So you can input data onto the detectors and trainers, but you you can you might just want to uh, generate the data from from an input source. So an input source can be either image from a camera can be point clouds from RGBD sensors, like the Kinect. Um, or we can use image files or uh, point cloud data from files. So I don't know if it's here. Oh, it will be later. Yeah, I'll show you how, how, this, how this is uh, implemented. But this is basically to, to grab the image or point cloud from a, either a device or from data on the hard drive. So how does it look on code? This is the the, um, the frame generator. This is an example of a frame generator that uh, will generate frames from the um, point cloud, a point cloud uh, from the from the Kinect or any other RGBD. Device. Basically, you, we are uh, using a frame. We we declare a frame, then we declare the generator, and then we get the frame from the generator. Pretty straightforward. Um, this is the type of generators that we can use. Uh, so it's all template based. So you can you when when once you uh, create a frame generator. You can create. Uh, you, you have to set up the the scene kind of the, the kind of scene that you want to take, either image or point clouds, and the uh, uh, input that you want to take, either files or devices, right? 
So with those two things, you can start grabbing stuff to process. Then you have the trainer. How do you train? Uh, you declare a trainer. You set up if you need them like this. This is like the whole. Uh, not all the trainers need everything, but you you set up uh, positive samples. You set up negative samples. Uh, you set the numbers of features negative, and then you you have uh, uh, you have this flag that you can set up, and then again you go ahead and train. That will generate the training that will be used on the detection. And then once you create the, tra the detection, you declare your detector uh, of the kind of detection that you want to use. Just uh, use the trainer. You, you, you give them the, the train da uh, training data location and go ahead and detect. Um, to obtain the detection, uh, you create a detection, and once you do the, the detection, you can just get it on the detection, and then you can access. Uh, this is a accessing the detection, so you get the information. And what we're doing here, uh, basically, is uh, getting the the OpenCV image from that detection, and and then you can you can show it, right? So sorry. Is the example code is it, is it also findable in, in, in GitHub? Or? Uh, there's there's a, the, these examples are all, um, uh, this is part of a documentation actually on okay. OpenDetection.com, mm -hmm. and uh, there's also a bunch of examples. Uh, there's actually examples of everything inside the library, okay. so you can just go through the code. And I'll go through the a few examples later. And uh, there, are, there are actually examples from, from the library. Okay. So you can find them there. Uh, yeah, so actually now uh, I'm going to show you uh, the, how, to, how to build a frame generator. It's, it's going to be fairly easy. And um, I hope it's not too boring. Wait. I want to see on this. So I'll switch now here. And. I'm going to build an example that's going to be a frame generator. Get this. So, um, I hope it. Can you see it from the back? Is it good? All right. So, I'll start. This is our. So one thing we don't have yet on the library are visualizers. So for visualizing stuff, what we need to use is either ECL visualizers for for the point cloud, or uh, OpenCV for the for the um, uh, for the images. This year we got this project luckily onto a Google Summer of Code. And hopefully, one of the tasks will be uh, building our own uh, visualization tool. So we wouldn't have to do this anymore. This is going to be our visualizer. All right. Then I'm going to create a frame. It's going to be of point two. It's right there, GBA. That is going to be a frame. Wait, I'm going to save this so we get some syntax uh, highlighting. I'm going to make it as an example of the library, so it's going to be maybe here. So it's going to be for Stadia frame uh, generator. All right. Um, let's 
So we have the frame here. Now I'm going to create the frame generator. That is going to be, it's going to grab this type of scene. So I can just go ahead fast here. this thing and it's going to get it from the device. I'm going to use a Kinect device for this. Right? If you remember, as I said, when you create a uh, generator, you need the type of data and the source. And the source now is going to be a uh, device. So this is just generator type device. All right. So now I'm going to just check frame generator is valid. So while it's working, I'm going to go ahead and grab a frame. And I'm just going to show this frame. So with the visualizer that we, um, it's here. Yeah. That visualizer that we create from, from PCL, I'm just going to go ahead and use it. Um, I'm going to remove the last one cloud. Make sure it's clean. I'm going to add the new one. Type point xy and it's going to be the frame that we got and I'm going to get the point cut out of the frame. Because these frames has have like some extra information not only a point cloud. So you have to get point cloud out of it to show it. Hopefully when we get our own visualizers, we don't have to do this. Probably the, the, the visualizer will take care of everything. So it's easier for everybody. Then we're going to do the spin. So we can move around and update. Then I'm going to delete the frame. So that's basically it. Uh, maybe it's too big, uh, but I hope you can see it. That's the main thing when getting getting the frame and everything. I'm gonna add it now to the examples, so I can um, wait. No, okay. On this image, I'm gonna add it up to the examples. Probably there's uh, actually a frame. Yeah, there's one here already, so I'm just going to copy it and add it. I'm going to add an example that it's called, who's, oh, we just did that, uh, C, who's A, frame, generator, This should work. Uh, hopefully, um, it might compile. We need to check. No, it didn't. Oh, yeah, we forgot. I forgot to include it. I have them somewhere. Yeah, to include the library. Right. Uh, I think we get this too. I have them. Frame generator from from the library. <coughs> Let's see how it goes now. All right. So if 
valid if the mist Type there. The other thing. Clean more. There's another. Nothing else. That should be it. I'm still getting my device. So for those of you that don't know what this is, this is just a Kinect device, uh, same as the one you have on the Xbox. Um, it will give you the um, 3D and uh, our, uh, our the color. So it's got it's got a camera on it. It's got um, a projector, and it's got uh, the receiver for those those the, that projector. The projector will project. Uh, a point, uh, point cloud that it's uh, that has a certain uh, a certain pattern, and then the the receiver will will receive that pattern, and because of the deformation in the space of that pattern, it will calculate the uh, the distance to those points, and therefore it, it will get the, the 3D, and then match it with the with the color. Uh, so hopefully we can, we're able with the. With the tool that we just created, we should be able to detect her. It was supposed to something, yeah, right? So that should be, if it hopefully, fingers crossed, it, it works. And um, yeah, that's it. I don't know if you can see it properly. It's downside because it's always downside. That's how. Okay. Getting it, but this is the. I don't know if it. Yeah, this is you guys. So this is the point cloud that we get. So this is this is how we got the the, the information here. Uh, that's how the, the the grabbers work. It's fairly easy to change it to the to the camera. We would only have to, uh, I don't know how much time we'll have. Um, I'll try to make it quick. So, to grab the camera, I think we'll just go to the next example because that the next example we'll, we'll, we'll use the camera. So, anyway, it's gonna, it's gonna um, show you how to grab from the camera. So, the next example is um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a cascade to classifier. To, to detect uh, faces. That's that's actually a fairly easy, um, uh, very common uh, application. But um, it's very cool to see uh, how easy it is with the with the new uh, with this new library. Uh, even though you might not have too much options yet to 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 tune it. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, at the plots here. I'll save it as uh, easy. Uh, okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and see. So, again, um, how should we do this? I need the training. Uh, I need the training for the for the cascade uh, detector. So I'm just gonna grab it from the input. I'm 
just going to assume uh, the first part is just the, the training location, mm -hmm. right? So I'm going to build the detector first. So because it is, we have the trainings already. One thing very cool that we do is that we provide the training data for these examples. So we can just go ahead and, and start uh, using them. Uh, this is a 2D um, classif uh, detector. So it's under, under the namespace G2D. And G also means global because it's using global features. This is going to be a cascade detector. And um, I'm going to just I mean, name it detector. detector. All right. U D D D cascade detector. That's it. I'm going to set the detector. The location of the training that data. And I'm going to start the detection. That's it. We're detecting, uh, up to now, we're detecting faces already. I'm just uh, <coughs> Give them, give the detector the, the data. The same way as we did with the frame generator, I'm going to generate frames from the camera and pass them to the detector so we can uh, go ahead and detect. Uh, I will start detecting faces as, as they get the, the frames. So let's get the scenes. Frame generator. This time, it's not going to be a point cloud, but it's going to be same image, which is the thing that we, the images that we get from the camera. So we're going to go ahead and have the same input. It's going to be generator type. It's going to be device, because we're going to use the camera. It's going to be a frame generator. And we're going to use the first camera device, uh, first device that it's from the laptop camera, because we don't have any other. And um, as we said, we don't have the visualization part yet. So we're going to create one using OpenCV. This is OpenCV here. I'm going to call it overlay. The normal, and then I'm gonna go ahead as the same same way as, as I did. Frame generator uh, file is valid. I'm gonna add this uh, white k white k that you always do in open, uh, OpenCV. I actually don't know why, but uh, if I don't add this, it doesn't work properly. Uh, and they do always, so I just I just add it. Uh, I'll be happy if someone has an explanation for this. Um, OK, so when, while the generator is valid, uh, we're going to get a scene. So we're going to pass it to the detector of the scene image. Wait, we're missing as well. Yeah, thank you. Um, scene image. Call it scene. And we're going to go ahead, frame generator, get next frame. There you go. Get next frame. Um, now we're going to pass that frame to the detector. Uh, the detector. 
is detector. Uh, we're detecting over the whole uh, over the whole image, so it's going to detect on me the function that we want to use. We're going to pass the uh, C there. And as I said before, what we get out of detection is uh, out, out of a uh, detector, uh, we get a detection, right? Detections to D. Uh, detections. So we get detections here. So now, if the size of the detections is more than one than zero. We're going to show on the CV, uh, on the image, and show. We're going to show what we detected, right? So, overlay is the name of the window. Detections. We're getting the information from the detection. If not, we could just go ahead and show the image from the from the scene. So it's, there's no detection to show. We just don't show it. Just the regular image coming out of the frame generator. It's going to be seen, and we're going to get a CV image for this uh, visualizer. Again, we're going to delete the scene because we don't want it anymore. So we can drag the next one. And we're going to add time here. And that's it. The fourth line should contain uh, the init function. Is it? In main. Oh. What do you mean? Here? Yeah. Yeah. That's misspelled, right? Thank you. All right, I think that should be it. We're gonna go ahead and add it to the examples again. Uh, just go ahead and copy this one. The name is, uh, I'm gonna call it Asia K, and then we're gonna call it K. This depends on the OD common library and OD uh, global image detector. So that should be enough. I'm not wrong. Um, so this is all we need to do. Frame detection, detector, and show results. Uh, because we had the training, the training data already. So let's see if that compiles. And, uh, Hopefully, that should be working. Wait, wait, K, okay. so let me just do that. Oh, DD, diction, not declared. Wait, K. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's an OD, that's in the wrong space. Should be that way. There you go. Um, so yeah, so this is the code, and uh, we're gonna check if that works. 
So my example should be under object detector, Fospasia, cascade. I'm gonna, as we said before, I'm gonna pass in the training data that I downloaded from the repository on the on the website. And let's train data. And it will take care of, of grabbing that and passing it to the detector so it should work. Oh, uh, wait, circuit fail. Wait, let's see. No space left in the box. All right. That's something wrong with the camera grabbing, probably. Let's see. a lot of times. Like we need this kind of uh, applications very often. So what we we do is uh, we have to code everything from, not everything from scratch because these other libraries that go, that are there is, are, are very nice, but still there's, the, it, it takes a lot of time to, to develop. I, I'll, I'll actually show you, uh, so this is the cascade that we just made. And, and if, if I actually purposely download it somewhere, if I can find uh, I think I did. Uh, I did download it, the version from OpenCV. That's actually uh, on the website. Uh, I just want to, com to compare the, how it looks. Uh, we have an internet, right? With this thing. Uh, is it on? Yes. And uh, the details are on the paper. All oh, right. The speaker details are on. Okay. So I'll just go ahead and try it. Where is supposed to be? Confirm. All right. Actually, a funny thing is that this was actually made by uh, another student that I had uh, on uh, Google Summer of Code. But if you have a look at the, at the code, the amount of code that you need for a uh, classifier to work, it's much more. So you need much more lines than we do here. So our, our it's here, right? This is like 20 lines and it's like maybe 200 here. So it's a bit more messy and uh, it takes a bit more of a time to do that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead now and uh, start with the final uh, demo. I don't, I don't know if I have time to write it all. Uh, yeah, I don't think I would. So I just go through the, the code 
a bit and show you how it works. Um, basically, uh, what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to do a 3D uh, detection. Uh, I'm sure you guys can see this properly. Probably at the back, right? So I'm just going to make it bigger. Maybe not as bigger. All right, so um, basically, again, we get a trainer. Uh, we get a trainer, different trainer. This time, uh, we get them the input directory, data directory, and we start training. Uh, then we have a detector. Uh, we create the detector here. We give them the input location. Uh, the train data location, and we initiate the detector. We grab the frame, fairly easy, this time from the Kinect, as we did at the beginning. And uh, again, same thing, frame generator. If it's valid, we grab the frame, uh, we clean up the visualizer, we fill visualizer, and we add the, the point cloud. We get the detections that are uh, that are going on in the frame. For this, we we pass the frame to the to the to the, uh, to the detector. And for this is like a global feature detection, so it, it will try to detect every object on the on the scene uh, based on some cat models that we train. Uh, so. What we do is that we, we go through every detection, so there's, there can be multiple detections at the same time. So we will go through every detection there and just uh, go, this is call handler, this is uh, just PCL, as I said, we don't have visualization here. Um, we will go through uh, every detection, give, uh, give the detection uh, color and uh, give them a name which is this here, we grab a position, and the name is here, the name of the detection, position, and these are some uh, visualization stuff that is not very important, the, the name of the cluster, and um, this is just some uh, addictization, and it will show up. Uh, fairly easy. Basically, the idea is that you can already detect stuff with the same the same way we did before, uh, same structure. You don't have to learn pretty much anything new. Like if, say, if you're, like for us, if you're working, not for me because I'm, I, I'm mainly focused on computer vision, but my, my, my colleagues can just use the same same stuff and go ahead and, um, and run it on the, uh, on the robot, so that's that's like very easy for them for detect a bunch of stuff. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, try to run this uh, version that I have already compiled. I think it's compiled, and uh, I'm gonna try to yeah I'm gonna use this. Gonna put this somewhere here. This is this is like. A robot, no. Yeah. That red thing should be a robot. I'm gonna check how it looks. Uh, for that, I can actually use the visualizer that we that we create before. But samples detection was easier. Frame generator. I'm gonna just check how it looks. Uh, and what we what this does is uh, I'm gonna get um, the image here. I'm gonna look for the dominant plane. That's like what this uh, detector is doing, which is gonna be probably this one. And uh, I'm gonna put some 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 stuff there. So I don't know, like this. It's not gonna be correct because I, I I'm using as train data. I'm using CAD models. Uh, 
So yeah, just I'll 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 show you what how it how it looks very fast. And um, should be um yeah. So it's getting the training data. It's already it's a, it's already trained because I tried it before. Uh, it should show up some cool cat things, uh, but I don't actually think I have time to show that. And fun cat should be somewhere. I don't know what it is now. Sometimes I get lost. Yeah, here it is. So uh, the other way as before. Um, we can just turn it up and down. That's it. Uh, yeah, so it's getting a bit confused, as you can see with the labels. It's saying, I told them energy drink, uh, because this, those are the models that I have. I don't have the model of this of this uh, thing. But we can keep on adding stuff, and then probably, I don't know if it, it will solve. Yeah, also, this is something different, is it? No. Uh, it depends, like, if, if it matches the model or not. If it, probably if, if we have a cup, it will detect a cup or, or stuff like that. Uh, so this is actually a lot of code if you have to do it by yourself. But uh, just doing it here, uh, it's, a, it's a very common task in robotics to get the position and the label of the object. And it's very easy to do it with, with this uh, library. So that's the main goal of, of the whole thing. I'm going to go back uh, for the Last uh, thoughts, uh, just a bit of idea. Uh, yeah, we've, uh, this is what we have. It's not very much more. Uh, there's a few other detectors that you can try out and play with. Uh, but uh, as we said, it's very new and no, don't we have much stuff. So we have a few ideas that we want to implement. Uh, we want to have uh, uh, CNN-based algorithms. That's, that's pretty new now. It's very... Um, uh, in the in the state of the art, so they work pretty well, and that's something that we want to implement. Uh, we want to improve the framework. Uh, we want to do some other stuff. We might want to do add, uh, some uh, some semantics, some language add to the to the library. We will see. So for those of you that are interested in this, we are on Google Summer of Code, both projects, Open Detection and Robocom. Uh, you can go ahead and apply for the ideas. Uh, very cool. Uh, you can get um, you get paid and uh, you get the opportunity to work in, in real real code and 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 do like very amazing stuff. And that's pretty much it. Like, uh, just want to get your feedback, guys. Uh, possibly uh, during the pop crawl or something. If you, if you guys are around, just talk to me. Uh, I'll be happy. Uh, to chat with you, uh, tell me if this is a crazy idea, if, if it works, if it doesn't, what your thoughts are, what are your needs and everything. So thank you very much and I hope it wasn't that boring.